Hey guys, it's Christopher Tarantola here, and I am going to do a different kind of video. I know you're used to watching gaming videos on this channel, but I'm going to start doing some science and space type videos. Kind of goes hand in hand with uh, the other project I've been doing, which is Mars Talk. You can find that on the Mars Society's YouTube channel, or you can go to www.marstalk.org. Um, that being said, uh, I I just watched last night something uh, that was, I, I don't know, it was way more exciting than I expected it to be. I've watched a lot of conferences and debates and stuff, and this was one of the more interesting ones. Alan Stern and Ron Eckers debated whether or not uh, Pluto is a planet, and more specifically, what the definition of a planet ought to be. So... Uh, Ron Eckers used to be the president of the IAU, which is the organization that deemed Pluto not a planet because of their definition in 2006 of what a planet ought to be. Their definition includes three different parts. First is um, that uh, the planet is basically uh, able to be rounded, not round, but uh, rounded. So I think it was hydrostatic equilibrium is the, the term used. And the second one is that it has uh, cleared its orbit of all other major players, if you will. And the, the third one is that it was in our solar system. So uh, if you're not in our solar system, sorry, you're not a planet, according to the IAU. And um, this was addressed by Ron. He said, look, uh, exoplanets and rogue planets and, and other t objects of that nature outside of the solar system were just not addressed. Nobody was asking us to name things uh, like those things. And so we didn't address it because it was not necessary to address it until which time when we are starting to name those objects. So... The IAU, according to Ron Eckers in this debate, was basically is put in place to uh, create an official name for objects. So um, the official name for Pluto is Pluto because the IAU says so, or Eris, or any other object within the solar system. In fact, right now there uh, there's a, a large Kuiper Belt object that is about roughly half the size of Pluto, that has yet to be named, and so they got a naming contest going on from now for not, for the next month, and I'll make sure to link that in the description here. Um, and so one of the uh, options is Vili, V-I-L-I, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. It's a uh, Norse god, if I remember correctly. There's a Chinese god, and I don't remember what that one is, and then there's a third one that is a German god. I, I say Vili, and I remember that one because that was my choice. So I'll let you look that up in the, the link, though. You can go and vote what you think the, the name ought to be with the IAU. Now, that all being our what... Uh, so that's not the IAU asking you to vote. Um, that is uh, the, the organization that found this object that is going to suggest a name to the IAU, which um, follows certain conventions, and so all three of those names match the conventions that the IAU and so the likelihood of the IAU passing or, or accepting that name is high um, but who knows what they're going to do I mean um, according to many out there they haven't always had the correct answer to things and uh, uh, the definition of planet is definitely one of those things to be specific so Alan Stern, um, his contention, and, and they went into a lot more detail than I'm going into here, but I'm just giving you a basic overview. So Alan Stern, his contention was, well, look, number one, most of the people who made the decision to call a planet uh, what uh, the IAU calls a planet were astronomers that mostly study stars and galaxies and not planets. And if you go to the people who actually study planets, planetary scientists, which of which uh, Alan Stern is... Uh, not just a planetary scientist, but he is uh, one of the more well-known and well-respected, and he's been in the field very long. He was the person in charge of the New Horizons spacecraft that visited Pluto, as well as Ultima Thule at the beginning of this year. And he's been involved in many other projects uh, before that, so it's not like that was his first rodeo, right? He was a principal investigator. You don't get to be principal investigator because... 
uh, without working on other projects first. So he also made the contention that, look, besides the fact that uh, the planetary scientists are the ones who ought to be naming this stuff because it's about categorization and the scientists who study this stuff ought to be able to categorize things, but it's not consistent with how everything else is named. You don't call a dwarf star different. A dwarf star is still a star. A dwarf galaxy is still a galaxy. And you don't change the definition of what a galaxy is because you want only a certain number of galaxies. Um, one of the contentions or one of the arguments that people have made, though Ron did not make this in uh, this debate, is that, well, the reason one of the reasons why you want to limit the number uh, or uh, change the definition or have the definition as it stands with the IAU is to limit the number of planets. And Alan Stern's like, that's kind of ridiculous. You want to have the number of planets be whatever the factual data shows. And if that means that there are 300 planets in the solar system, okay, so be it. There are 300 planets in the solar system. Nothing wrong with that. Why does it have to be that there are only eight? Um, another contention that he made is that it makes more sense to name something based on its properties and not based on its location. Essentially, while there are one of the uh, three criteria for the IU is that it is it has hydrostatic equilibrium, um, really that definition, including the fact that it clears its orbital path, has more to do with its location than anything else because if you have the same exact planet in Mercury's orbit, it can be considered a planet. But if you take Mercury and move it out far enough to Pluto's orbit, it would not be considered a planet anymore because it would not have had the mass to clear its orbit. And this is even, and you say, well, that's the tiniest planet in our solar system. And in fact, there are a couple moons of Jupiter that are bigger than Mercury. But you take the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter, and you push it out far enough, and I think it was like 100 AU or something like that, um, Jupiter would no longer be considered a planet. Furthermore, he made the contention, and one of the questioners also made that point with their question is, you know, Pluto wouldn't be considered a planet because it hasn't cleared its path. But by that criteria, none of the planets would be considered a planet because there are st still asteroids and comets and other objects that cross the path of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, even Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. In fact, Pluto is in a similar orbit to, like, they, they cross orbits with Neptune. And so, by that definition, Neptune couldn't be a planet because of Pluto itself. And... Uh, when faced with this contention, uh, Ron, his retort would be, or his his uh, answer to that was, well, look, that's not really the intention. A, uh, you could say that, you know, there are still objects there, but they're all Trojans, which was a falsehood on his part. Um, and, and I don't know that uh, he was trying to lie. I think he was not well informed because he's not a planetary scientist, and he said so himself. Um, but that's that just belabors the point that, look, if you are not somebody that knows about this stuff, if you don't even have your basic facts, how can you presume to have any uh, authority to, to categorize what a planet is and isn't when you don't even have basic facts about what clearing an orbit is? And uh, that, that was Alan's contention, and that's, uh, if it's not clear, my contention here. So, uh, going but going back to what Ron was saying... You know, Neptune has cleared its orbit by the intention behind the the IAU's naming nomenclature, or, or naming criteria, I should say. So, Pluto, while it is in an orbit similar to uh, Neptune, where they uh, sometimes Pluto is inside the orbit of Neptune. It is in a, a Pluto is in a resonant orbit with Neptune because of Neptune's mass. Neptune controls the orbits of any objects that are in its orbit. They're Trojans, if you will, or in resonances. And um, it was never answered, but uh, one of the uh, retorts to that that Alan Sturd made was like, well, you know, Saturn is in a resonant orbit with Jupiter, so does that mean that 
Saturn's not a planet. And there was also like there, the, uh, um, one of the I think most powerful arguments that was made um, was it's just an intuitive sense. If you ask my seven year old son, uh, you show him a picture of Pluto and you ask him what is that, he's gonna say that's a planet. If you show him a picture of Eris, if and when we finally go there, he's gonna say it's a planet. If you show him a picture of Ceres, or Vespa, or any of these uh, planets, what I'm going to call planet, um, using the, the GPD definition, which is the, the geophysical um, planetary definition. Um, it, it just is, it makes intuitive sense, and he, he used Star Trek. Like, if it goes up on the uh, screen of the Star Trek Enterprise, what do you think they're going to be calling that on the show? They're going to call it a planet. Drop the mic, you know, and you you walk off, right? And you know the basic, the the I saw an analysis on Twitter. One of the biggest criticisms of the the GPD, which I don't think I actually said this. So um, there's two criteria on what makes a planet, what makes not a planet, uh, within the the geophysical planetary definition, which is number one, it's large enough to have hydrostatic equilibrium just like with the IAU definition that criteria is the same and then the other criteria is that it is not large enough its mass isn't large enough to have fusion happening within the core of the planet in other words that at that point it becomes a star and so you know if Jupiter basically if you put a lot more material onto Jupiter it would get larger and it would eventually start fusing on the inside and it would become a star in its own right and there are a lot of, in fact, most of the other stars in our galaxy that we think are binary or even trinary, etc. And that the fact that the sun in our solar system is by itself is, um, at least not in the majority, If not, it's not a, an abnormal thing, but it's not a, in the majority of the stars that are out there that we know of. So, wrapping it all back up, I, I think that Alan Stern... Uh, I was already proponent that uh, Pluto and the moon, Luna, as well as Callisto and Ganymede and Io and uh, Europa and Titan and Triton, um, they are all planets by the definition. They are planets. And yes, some of them can be considered dwarf planets, but dwarf planets are a planet. And to call it... The, to call it anything other than a planet when you are calling something dwarf planet dwarf is basically just an adjective and planet is the noun it's a planet linguistically it makes sense and then scientifically it makes sense as a cat when you're trying to categorize things which is important when you're doing science that makes more sense and ron eckerman's uh i'm sorry ecker's I apologize, his name is uh, Eckers. Ron Eckers' contention was that, well, look, uh, all the Kuiper Belt objects, including Pluto, Eris, and, and etc., are all very different than the Earth, Mars, etc., Jupiter. And I'm sitting here going, okay, well, if you're going to use the, that, it's different because, let me get my thought together. If you're going to use that criteria that, because the Kuiper Belt objects are different than the other eight planets that you agree are planets, then you kind of have to separate and make a new category for Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now, Alan Stern didn't say this, but that's that's my what that's what I was that's the the thought that hit my head when I was watching it. I was like, okay, well, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are very different than Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Venus very different um they're they should be in their own category if we're going to go with that and on some level i think they should be they they should be their own category oh wait they are it's called gas giants and ice giants so there's actually two other categories and terrestrial planets so there is differentiation in categorization but they're all still planets right so i think it's uh kind of absurd that they're they're holding to this definition so tightly and arguing that it is a correct definition 
And, you know, one of the contentions that Ron Eckers made also was that, well, look, it's it, one of the, A, it's important that we have a naming system so that, you know, when we're talking about an object, we all know what the object is. And um, there are two points to that. Um, number one is it was demonstrated without any shadow, like it was just stated, it was shown as fact that any and all planetary scientists in the field that are actually doing science, writing papers that are peer-reviewed, and, and, and moving the science forward in this field, use planet by the GPD definition, not the IAU definition. And if they use the IAU definition, it is simply in passing and as criticism of the IAU and why they're not using it. Um, and there was a scientific study done of all the scientific studies to show this according to Alan Stern. Now, there's another point to this, and i got to get my, my thought together for a second. I might even edit this. Okay, so Ron uh, Eckers, he said basically that, I, I'm not on a first name basis, and I keep wanting to call him just Ron and not... Ron Eckers or Mr. Eckers, and I ought to call him that. I ought to, I owe him that much respect as a, a professional and uh, uh, an accomplished person in his own field. I, I don't take that away from him. But uh, in any case, he he made the point that you know, ling it's it's a it's not a science. It is an international effort. Na it's naming something so it's not science and i would say that's exactly why the iau should have no business knowing what a, uh, defining what a planet is or isn't because that is a scientific categorization to call something pluto or earth or aries or really or whatever you want to call that that is naming and that's not scientific it's somewhat arbitrary and i'm okay with the iau having some sort of oversight over that so that we can all agree what when we call something Pluto that we all know what we're talking about, that we all know we're talking about that object over there that's a planet that has the heart-shaped um, area on it. And, you know, it just makes sense that you would name things. That's, I mean, heck, the New Horizons team, they, was, they started naming things informally so that they could start talking about what they're looking at on Pluto and Sharon and uh, Ultima Thule, for that matter. All right, you, you start naming things so that, you know, there's language. That's how humans work. It's how we communicate. And that's fine. But to say, okay, well, this is a planet and this is not, that's more than simply calling, uh, a, ma making a name. That is that scientifically categorizing something. And the argument that, well, that should not be done by planetary scientists, which Eckers said multiple times in this debate, just is nonsensical to me. It's not logical. It is a fallacy to say such a thing. You are literally categorizing something that should be categorized scientifically and not arbitrarily or by vote, by committee. So... That's my take on it. Man, if you haven't watched this, why are you watching me? You go watch this, then you come back and listen to what I'm saying, okay? Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you hit that like button. If I get enough likes, I get enough attention here, I'll keep doing them. So I'll talk to you all later. And uh, check out Mars Talk. Shameless plug. <laughs>